Let's talk about Google close out an $8,000 profit on my puts at first thing open this morning. And I actually entered again with some more puts before the bell because we saw Alphabet push up and then Alphabet delivers some insane earnings. They talk about share buybacks. They're talking about they're doing a first ever dividend. And obviously the stock absolutely moons. So I'm going to get killed on that position. I'm going to probably lose about $10,000. So we're going to go over in this video, the numbers for Google. We're going to talk about why I entered my put yesterday, why I took profits at open, which was a very smart thing to do. But more importantly, we're going to go over why I was getting puts going into Google earnings, because the reason that I got puts was not wrong. But holding through earnings when I probably shouldn't was a problem. And so I want to explain to you guys what I did right and what I did wrong. And we're also going to go over Google and the actual earnings numbers. So EPS was $1.89 per share versus $1.51 per share. Revenue was $80.5 billion versus $78.5 billion. So overall, really solid. But we know that it's not just earnings. It's going to be guidance. It's going to be key metrics specifically for each company that's really going to move the needle when it comes to the stock after hours. And so YouTube advertising revenue, which is very important, and we've seen this number go down over the past couple of years, since the Rona high was actually up at 8.09 billion versus 7.72. Google Cloud was 9.5 versus 9.3, and traffic acquisition or TAC was 12.95. So let's go over why I took my puts, right? This is important to understand. It is probably, I feel, not going to be like some massive reason that you guys probably think. I, I think that a lot of the times people think that I, I have these like grand plans of why a stock is going to drop and it's really just numbers and patterns. So the reason that we took this put position, you can see the execution. The first one was on 419. The second one in which we averaged down was up here um, on 423. And then the closing today was at 9.32 a.m. And so 9.32 a.m. was basically our lows. And the reason that I was taking my profits here and the reason that we even you know, went short in the first place is because we had a break of structure back here at $150. Basically, price broke through this support level and made a lower low. Now, 80% of the time when structure is broken, we are going to bounce our way back up. We are going to look for an optimal trade entry somewhere around 50% of this value. So about 158 or $160. And then we will look to take profits at a lower low, which is why my target was down at 151.93. Now, this morning, obviously Meta did not do well at all when it came to earnings, so the entire market sold off. And we saw Google trading around here two to three minutes after market open of about $153. The reason that we closed out this profit was because of risk versus reward. We know that the target that we're going to hit 80% of the time is 152. But from where we were this morning down to 152, we could have maybe made what? Another $1,000, $2,000? But to risk the profits that we already had would have been silly. And so instead, I closed out the position. From there, after closing out the position, we ended up bouncing massively. And the thing is that because this target was not taken out and because the stop loss was not closed over, this pattern is still in play. From here, we end up getting a bounce all the way back up to $158. And I thought to myself, hey, I already banked about 8,500 bucks. And we know statistically just from the patterns, not fundamentals, that we're going to have an 80% chance that we're going to sell back off to 152. This time, instead of going with May puts, I ended up going with June puts because I knew that implied volatility was high. If I'm going to swing it through earnings, implied volatility is going to drop after earnings and therefore crush the contracts. So if I went with June, implied volatility was about half of what the May implied volatility was. And also, I brought the position sizing down because I knew I was going to swing through earnings. So I only went in with a $14,000 position, and because I already banked $8,700 on this prior trade, I knew that even if my contracts went to zero, if, if what happened happened, Google went up 15%, I knew that worst comes to worst, I'd lose 14 grand, which means net net, I'd lose probably about $6,000. And so that was more than worth it for me to take the trade. And then obviously we had Google earnings and they said, fuck your pattern. And it ripped 12%. And now we're trading up at $176. Now I get a lot of comments in the description and, you know, on YouTube and Twitter, basically saying like, dude, patterns don't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about fundamentals. And you're entirely right. My patterns have nothing to do with the fundamentals of the stock. I'm not 
looking at that, and I'm not saying that that's what happens. But what I am saying is that when you actually look at a series of patterns that replay itself in the market thousands and thousands of times, because remember, all these all these candlesticks is just group psychology. So it's not random patterns. It's psychological patterns that play themselves in the market each and every single day from participants who can actually move the market. And so that's why these patterns work over the long term. Term. You don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of days, but we do know that maybe not over a month, like in January, you can see here, we lost $34,000, but at least maybe over two months, maybe even, you know, over three months or four months or five months, right? The longer out in time that you go, the more patterns that you get to play, the longer that you're in the game, the better of a chance that you have to actually succeed. And the problem is, one, nobody is told that, that you actually have to be able to stick around long enough to just survive the game long enough. And the other aspect is that unfortunately, a lot of people just over leverage their accounts and trade with too much money. And so the biggest thing that changed my life and my trading was not the best indicator in the world. It was just learning proper risk management. And if you guys want to learn how to do that and trade with me every single day, go check out my Discord community. The link's in the description. You get access to all my trades, all my trading bots, all of my private indicators. If you guys just want to come hang out on X and Twitter and hang out with me for free over there, come chill. I post a lot of my trades over there and I post a lot of great content in real time so you guys can follow some positions and hopefully make some capital. Thanks for the support, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.